So I've been thinking about playing this uh, game called Asagao Academy, but there's so many different characters in it, I don't know which, uh, which route to pursue. Well, let's see what Twitter had to say. Thinking about playing Asagao Academy for an upcoming Indicate series, which character route should I pursue? 100% John. Hmm. Seems like he beat out everybody else. But, uh, I can't do this alone, so I got my pal, Unko-san! Say hi to the people, Unko-san. Konnichiwa. Kore wa Unko desu. Some talking shit right there. Alright, so if we're gonna do this John Tron route the right way, let's, uh, start off with the new intro. Kick yeah, let's start the re- All right, gang, welcome back to a brand new episode of Andy Cade. My name's Andy, as always, and today we're playing Asagao Academy. Now, uh, this is a fan-made game from two lovely ladies who made a, uh, just kind of a fanfic story, I guess, involving the members of the Normal Boots and Hidden Block Clubs. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Normal Boots is basically like a, uh, kind of a, uh, a group of uh, YouTubers, and same with the Hidden Block Club as well, that primarily specialize in like video game related content, stuff like that. Um, some names you may know, uh, John Tron, Peanut Butter Gamer, Gerard the Completionist, Pro Jared, maybe? <laughs> so it's basically just a group of uh, people that uh, produce content together and like to frequently collab with each other, so. Uh, this is kind of a little what-if scenario if they were all in like a Japanese high school together, so. And also the word Asagao means uh, morning glory uh, in Japanese. So hence the, uh, the morning glory flower and the logo here. And I gotta say, the, the, uh, the art style on this is really, really good. And it's hard to believe it was, the whole thing was made only by, by two people. It was just, it's unreal. So, um, without further ado, Let's get right into the game. And uh, judging from the uh, poll results on Twitter, we're going to be playing the JonTron route. So if you guys didn't get that from the earlier bit here. So let's get right into the game. So here we are, chapter one. Just got back from Wendy's, so I'm going to be sipping my drink here. Okay. So before we uh, continue with this, um, I just want to say that I'm going to make this uh, playthrough a little bit different than my normal stuff. Um, instead of just kind of blazing through, getting like the best possible route and all this kind of other stuff, I'm going to make this playthrough interactive. So um, what I'm going to do is whenever I'm confronted with a choice in Asagao Academy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the video right there. So I'm basically going to play from choice to choice. Now if the... Uh, if the video is only like a couple minutes long or something like that, I may end up combining them or whatever the case may be. But the general concept is just to play until you get up to a choice. And from there, I'm going to put a little poll up on Twitter. So if you're not following me on Twitter, twitter.com slash the Andy uh, Links and stuff are in the description below in the boopity boops. Um, be sure to uh, vote in the, uh, the poll. And it'll last about a week, five days, something like that. So. The uh, end results of the poll will be the choice that I pick for the next episode. So uh, I'll be recording basically one episode a week, is the idea here. And uh, I'll be playing basically based off the decisions that you guys make. So this is more of a let's play instead of just a me play, you know. So I thought I'd get you guys in on all the cool action too. So uh, And I'll be sure to pin the tweet at the top of my Twitter page so you don't have to go digging around for stuff. But anyway, let's get on with the game. So, the train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me farther and farther from home. Across from me sat a boy, face half buried in a newspaper paper. He was deeply entranced in whatever article he was reading and hadn't spoken a single word to me, even when I asked if I could join him in the last compartment with any available space. He shrugged, nodded, 
and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It had been almost an hour, in fact, and he hadn't once looked at me. Devoid of conversation, I took instead to counting the buttons on the pretentiously lush carmine seat cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two, and so forth, over and over. Now and again, I turned to look out the window where the trees were blurring by. Sometimes the smeared green would break and reveal the quiet blue of the Sea of Japan. I miss that about Japan, just all the lush greenery and the ocean. God, I miss, miss Tokyo Bay, man, <laughs> gotta say. Eventually, this rapidity made my stomach churn and I went back to counting the buttons on the seat cushions. Oh. One, two, three. The train compartment shuddered around us. My eyes wandered to the boy in his jacket. It wasn't the school-issued blue that I and the other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was a green, varsity-like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn on front. Hmm. Oh, who's this guy? He's got the shoujo sparkles and everything. So, you're a first year then. He folded his newspaper neatly, sat it in his lap, and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. He doesn't look interested at all. <laughs> look at those sparkles, man. Did you just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy-lidded eyes. His hair was immaculately groomed, his teeth straight and blindingly bright. Yeah, we can see all those teeth through those, uh, that close smile there. <laughs> there was something about him, the way the light hit him, that made him look like he was almost sparkling? Oh, hey, that's me! And, uh, I guess, <laughs> in tribute to another Let's Player who played this game, I'm wearing my Commander Holly shirt. Hey, Tweetorts, how's it going? Welcome back, Yasuko Academy! <laughs> me? <laughs> he glanced around the compartment, empty besides us, and laughed. Oh, no, I'm not a first year, I'm a third year. The train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against metal tracks. The sudden shift threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep it together. What kind of impression would I leave, puking on a student before I even arrived at the academy? The boy frowned. I picked at the hem of my cotton skirt. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a moment of mouth fishing to find a response. Out fishing? Mm. I, uh, it's, it's because I'm a transfer student? <laughs> he laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. I removed my acceptance letter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper, heavyweight, off-white, had accumulated creases from my reading and rereading, as if the words might have changed since the last time I read it. Wow. The boy took it, studied it, then handed it back to me. I'll see you around. Well then, Hannah, I suppose I'll be seeing you around. He smiled at me as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hiccuped a response, he was already gone from the compartment. I stared out into the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized he, having gotten it from my acceptance letter, knew my name and I never got his. The train settled at the station, and I filed out with the rest of the uniformed students. It was early April, and the last frost of winter had come and gone. Especially in Japan, like, <laughs> winter is long gone by April. Although it is still quite cold. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering and the occasional gust weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked along the road with a swarm of blue-jacketed bodies, looking at the little groups breaking off from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so animatedly around me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands. It was leather-bound and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to the school, and I was, for maybe the first time in my life, thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. My school-issued 
Meh. My school issued black oxfords click click clicked on the pavement. I walked this walk over and over in my mind. So many nights I lay awake, imagining what it would be like to walk from the train station to Asagao Academy this first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk. That somehow, everything would be magically different. But as I looked around, I realized nothing had changed. I hadn't changed. By the time I reached the massive gate of the, to the academy, I forgot all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. The school, framed by the gate's twisted black metal, was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I saw in its pamphlets. This was it, Asagao Academy. I glanced around, the swarms of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. A girl pressed a button to one side of the gate. The excitement in the air was almost palpable. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. As the rest of the group shifted into motion, I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself into knots. The crowd split off in different directions. For a moment, I panicked. Hey, who's this guy? A tired looking man with graying hair called out for the first years, a cluster of fresh faced students gathering around him. <laughs> Tall boy. Hey, hey, look at that girl! I turned. A few feet away, a small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. Pink hair, are you kidding me? How desperate can you get? Hot shame crawled down my neck. I attached myself to a group of girls, following a few steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas hummed in time to my shoes crunching against gravel. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. I was born this way, baby. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, a large sign in the lawn reading Primrose House. The building dwarfed me in size and sheer intimidation. How many students did Asagao have? As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away, then looked back. She was staring at me. Hello? <laughs> she walked over. Hey, you must be my roommate. I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were akin to a perpetual bouncy castle. What? What? <laughs> me? Bingo. Of course you, silly. Let me guess. Room 325? I thought back to the paper I received a month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year of my dorm arrangements. Uh... Uh, yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were going to be a total main character. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair! I felt a lump forming in my throat. What was she talking about? She had to be making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on campus, and I was already being mocked. My hands began to tremble. Is... is there something wrong? My hair? Aw, oh, looks like you're gonna cry. Don't cry, Hana. Her face slackened from its amused smile to a more worried expression. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, no, it's great. I'm sorry. We're getting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Um. Yeah. I'm Mai Sasaki. You must be Hana. I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. All your school books are waiting in our room with your welcome letter, and I read the envelope. I hope you're not mad. Mai started walking towards the dorm's front doors. 
I followed behind like a lost puppy. Did you check in at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good. They'll offer to have a staff member give you a tour of the campus, but I can show you around. We don't get many transfer students in year three, you know. <gasps> oh, is that your only bag? Just the one? I'm glad I brought an extra bag of stuff to decorate our room with. I started already. I hope you don't mind. But I did wait to string the lights. I thought we could do it together, you know. She spoke quickly, the words bubbling from her mouth, and left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Yeah, okay, that sounds great. Or good, great. She held the front door open for me and I hurried inside. Girls filed up and down the hallway, howling greetings and exchanging vague niceties that were, more often than not, how was your break? And look how, how tan you got. It seemed like everyone knew each other. Fun fact, um, tanning is kind of an uncommon thing in Japan. Um, it's actually more common for girls to uh, actually avoid the sun. <laughs> so they tend to put on like a lot of sunscreen and they have these things called UV sleeves. So it looks, it kind of looks like they're wearing like an under, like a long sleeve undershirt. It's really strange, but uh, they typically do whatever they can to avoid sunlight so they don't darken their skin because they, they prefer to be as, you know, as white skinned as possible because, you know, in America it's kind of considered like, well, it's a little unhealthy. You don't really go outside that much, you know, stuff like that. But in Japan, it's very highly prized for women because I guess it's uh, kind of an emphasis of the purity of the skin and plus to avoid, you know, skin cancer and r premature wrinkles, you know, all that stuff. But anyway, fun fact. So let's continue. I followed Mai as she led me through the maze of students and up two flights of stairs. Each dorm floor looked the same as the last, narrow, white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Thin gold numbers were tacked to the front of each, the numbers rising as we climbed. Mm. You're not missing anything with the campus tour, I promise. Mr. Saitomo does them every year and he's like totally dull. He just drags you around the entire campus and talks in that weird squeaky voice of his. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I smiled, trying to not, bleh, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thanks. We headed down a hallway on the third floor. Mai stopped us in front of a door, a door numbered 325. Here we are! A faint smell of potpourri wafted through the room. The walls, like the hallway, were a soft powdery pink. Mai are ready to face them with a tapestry of posters, magazine cutouts, and photographs. Some of the photos were of cats, but most were of male models and rugged musicians. A bunk bed, two writing desks with wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity, all clearly provided by the school, were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny room. Alvin Stein. <laughs> I'm reading some of the uh, posters here. Uh, Tortured Soul, the only Maya guitar understands me world tour. But yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is kind of a fancier version of, uh, of what dorms and stuff look like in America, anyway. Um, I don't really know too much about college dorms in uh, at uh, Japanese schools, but uh, most of the time, like, uh, it, it's kind of a weird thing, right? Because uh, in America, typically you uh, go to dorms or you and a couple friends get like a house or like a big apartment together or something like that. And, you know, you share a lot of similar things. I mean, you might have your own room, but there's like uh, a common space, you know, living room, stuff like that. But in Japan, uh, it's very normal for students to just have like single apartments or like kind of like a student apartment. I mean, sometimes it's like a, a fully fleshed out one bedroom apartment, you know, with a kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, stuff like that. Other times it's more likely to be like a studio apartment kind of deal which may or may not have its own bathroom, so you might have to share a bathroom. But uh, it all depends on the school and the dormitories and stuff like that, so... Anyway, let's continue. The top bunk was already covered in neatly tucked blankets and throw pillows of clashing patterns and colors. 
The bottom bunk had a single, stiff-looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that I didn't need to touch. That I didn't need to touch to know was horribly itchy. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of uh, reminds me of the blankets we had in the Navy. Uh, the Navy provided blankets, you know, the big gray ones. Um, some people swear by them, but they were always just too damn itchy for me. So, whenever I'd have them, I would just basically use it to kind of prop my feet up a little bit. And that's about it, really. So, <laughs> I like nice, soft, comfy blankets. Got a couple of them in Korea, actually. The uh, polar bear blanket, which is uh, uh, kind of knocked down right now, so you can't really see it here. But I got a polar bear that polar bear blanket and a uh, kind of a uh, almost like a tiger looking blanket I guess best way I can describe it got those both in South Korea and they're the most comfortable blankets I've ever had um, I guess my only complaint is in a way they're kind of too effective so they're best suited for uh, winter time as opposed to summertime you know because Oftentimes I wake up in like a big sweat around my neck because you know I just like bundling up and stuff when I go to sleep. But anyway, I must have grimaced because Mai quickly smiled at me. I brought way too many pills and blankets. I always overpack. I went to Italy over break and mom got really mad at me because I bought five bags. We were only there for a week. <laughs> she laughed, pulled se several blankets and pillows from her bunk and rearranged them neatly on mine. A sudden twinge of guilt and embarrassment hit me. Perfection. There, that's much better. <laughs> Thanks, Mai. I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack its contents. Several changes of clothes, pen, uh, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father, a dilapidated stuffed rabbit, an old portable radio, and a small black box. What's in the box, Anna? What's in the box? Mai opened the curtains and the sunlight poured in. So, oh shit. So, where are you from? I slid the now empty suitcase under the bottom bunk. Uh... About two hours north of here, it's a small town called Amerisu. You probably never heard of it. What a hipster, dude. <laughs> I set the stuffed rabbit, Mr. Bunny, on my bed beside a purple and teal throw pillow. Oh, did you go to a different boarding school or? No, I went to a public school down the street from my house. Public school? What was that like? Were the students mean? Did you have a lot of friends? I always went to private schools. My parents work a lot and my dad goes overseas, so I think they stuck me here for convenience. Did I hit the... Oh, whoops. Come on. Oh, hey, what's that? I would removed an ornately patterned origami crane from the black box and was setting it on the unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this? My mother made it for me a long time ago. I sat it beside a stack of thick notebooks or textbooks which I assumed were provided for me. Oh, wow, it's so pretty. I've never seen paper like that before. <gasps> oh yeah, the lights. Let me get them. I went to her own desk, opened the drawer, and pulled out a long tangled string of fairy lights. I thought these would look nice. Here, help me string them up. She grabbed a container of pushpins, then pulled her wooden desk chair out and over to one wall. I did the same with my own. Together we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. How was the train ride over? Did you meet anyone? Um, no, not really. I was in a compartment with some guy and... What? Some guy, huh? Was he cute? Uh, um, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't even get his name. Uh, mm. My seemed disappointed for a moment, then perked back up. You'll have to point him out to me if you see him again. Okay. Once we finished stringing the lights, Mai climbed down from her chair and brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah! <laughs> Done! Okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. 
there's this ramen place down the street from campus that's like out of this world. But the school only lets us leave campus on the weekends. It's like Navy life. My walk to the window. We could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out. But I guess you might want to go to the, the, oh, the calf. <laughs> might want to go to the calf since you just got here. We could, <laughs> she was, <laughs> she was suddenly interrupted by her own enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh, Mimi Santos totally just tripped outside, fell on her face. I saw it. Um. Oh, does that mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh well. Anyways, let's go eat. I'm totally starved. Good idea, Mai. She led me out of the room before I had even real had the chance to respond. The cafeteria was buzzing with students excited for the new year. The only people as nervous looking as I felt were the tables of skittish, wide-eyed first years. This kind of looks like uh, like my college. I stepped into line behind Mai, taking an empty plastic tray. We shuffled through, asking for helpings from the sulky cafeteria workers when we passed something that looked good. With full trays, Mai had led me straight to a table in the back where a few students were already sitting. Mai sat down and I took a seat across from her. Hi Mai, how was your break? It was good. I went to Italy and Spain. Dad fell off a jet or a ski jet and broke his ankle. Uh huh. It's better now though. Oh. Well, that's nice. I expected to be introduced, but the girl turned back to her group of friends, and my turned back to me. She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me, in a practically minute-by-minute -minute account, about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met at the beach that didn't go farther than a few salty kisses. I sat back and let Mai talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to breathe. I picked up my Brussels sprouts and studied Mai as she spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice small details about her. She had a high songbird voice. What? <laughs> she was dynamic, her face twisting this way and that into exaggerated expressions as she spoke. She laughed often. She imitated people in wildly unflattering voices, seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion of them. But most notably, she talked. A lot. I didn't find this particularly annoying, as it filled the silence that she hardly ever asked questions that required my full attention. Just as Maya was rounding off a shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing, a flash of a familiar green caught my eye. I glanced over. Hey! That's him! Huh? Who? I leaned across the table to whisper, just in case he could hear me through the ambient chatter of the lunchroom. The boy from the train! That's him! What? What? Jared! Um, yeah, <laughs> with the weird green jacket and swoopy hair. He just picked up his tray and was walking past us when something seemed to catch his eye. Hmm. Oh, you. I looked about up, ugh, up at him, suddenly realizing he was talking to me. Hana. Hana, I met you on the train. How are things settling down for you? <laughs> really well. I found my roommate, and she's been helping me out. I gestured to Mai, who was thunderstruck. In fact, looking around, everyone was. Oh, in fact, looking around, everyone was. People stopped eating to, to turn and stare at Jared and me. My shoulders bunched up around my neck. Well, if you ever need any help, I'll be around. Third year, right? I nodded. All right. Some of my friends are in that year. Of course, they can't compare to me, but I'll give them the heads up to look out for you. He flashed a dazzling smile, then winked. <laughs> it's the least I could do for such a cute girl. Well, I'll see you around. I watched, a torrent of thoughts raging through my head as she, as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket? <laughs> <laughs> That's Jared! She tore her eyes away from me and looked at me. Or at him. So 
He's the most beautiful guy in school. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I like that sound bite. <laughs> I can't believe he just looked at me. I looked at my. Her cheeks were glowing an indecent pink. Why do they all wear those jackets? Aren't all the guys supposed to wear, like, blue blazers as part of their uniform? No, they're allowed to. They're... You know Jared? Oh, it's that girl. That girl turned back around and was looking at me with sudden interest. I... Did I know him? I only talked to him on the train for a few minutes, so not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, Mai and this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everybody seemed to be listening in. They seemed so surprised when he talked to me. Maybe a little white lie couldn't hurt? Alrighty, so, this is our first choice. And like I said, I'll be posting something on Twitter, a little poll for you guys. It'll be up for about five to seven days. I'm thinking more around five. And then at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the, uh, the poll's run, I'm gonna go with whatever choice you guys picked between I guess so and uh, not really. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son. Signing up for now, thanking you guys Boop, for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. Also, want to thank you guys for liking, the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.